the age of thermonuclear weaponry was officially opened in November 1952, when the United States detonated the first hydrogen bomb. Since the Soviets had atomic bombs of their own by that time, the design of the hydrogen bomb was intended to one-up the existing bombs in each superpower's arsenal, which had explosive yields comparable to those of the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The disturbing experiment succeeded when the United States tested Ivy Mike at the Pacific Proving Ground in the Marshall Islands. In less than a minute, you will see the most powerful explosion ever witnessed by human eyes. The blast will come out of the horizon just about there. And this is the significance of the moment. This is the first full-scale test of a hydrogen device. If the reaction goes, we're in the thermonuclear era. For the sake of all of us, and for the sake of our country, I know that you join me in wishing this expedition well. It is now 30 seconds to zero time. Put on goggles or turn away. Do not remove goggles or face first until 10 seconds after the first flight. The test island was completely destroyed by the 10 megaton detonation. Nearby islands vegetation was torn apart, and wave heights of 6 meters were generated. One hour after the test, 14 Air Force planes flew into the mushroom cloud to obtain samples of contaminated debris. One pilot perished during the mission itself, and another died of cancer at the age of 59. The largest American nuclear test, and the sixth largest nuclear test of all time, should have been a routine procedure, at least compared to other such explosions. That would turn out not to be the case. During the planning phase, a miscalculation resulted in a detonation much more powerful than intended, which shocked observers and civilians alike, and carried enormous implications for public opinion surrounding nuclear tests. The planned explosive yield of the Bravo device was 6 megatons of TNT equivalent. Instead, it achieved an incredible 15 megatons.
The aircraft filming the test was 50 miles away from the detonation, but the fallout seriously endangered the ground and observation crews on the opposite side of the island chain from the test site. The observation crew had to shelter in a bunker for hours on end until radiation levels outside subsided. At least two ships, a Japanese fishing vessel and a US Navy tanker, were contaminated by radioactive dust from the test site with no countermeasures available. The smallest traces of fallout were found as far away as Australia, Japan, India, and even Europe. The House in the Middle was a US civil defense film released in 1954. Its content was intended to inform the American public about the best ways to avoid house fires from thermal radiation, since this would be the next major hazard if a home was not immediately destroyed in a nuclear blast. The footage of the test houses was taken on May 8, 1953, during the encore test of Operation Upshot Knothole. This test utilized a 27 kiloton bomb.
chest houses with fresh, white paint, and a clear, well-kept yard and interior survived the intense heat, while poorly painted, poorly kept, and decaying test houses quickly burst into flames, despite being located identical distances from the explosion. This footage is taken from a Chinese propaganda film celebrating the country's first nuclear tests in the mid-1960s. The first test had an explosive yield of 22 kilotons. The second test was more powerful at 35 kilotons. Nuclear war itself nearly broke out over these tests as the American, Taiwanese, and Soviet governments considered attacks on China's nuclear facilities during the 1960s.
One of the hazards inherent in continued nuclear testing is that countries less wealthy than the nuclear superpowers will be urged to develop nuclear weapons but with fewer resources to ensure safety for their populations and those of neighboring countries. China conducted a total of 45 nuclear tests in Xinjiang province until 1996, when China joined the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. In 2008, Chinese state media outlet Xinhua News acknowledged that military personnel and civilians affected by nuclear tests were receiving undisclosed compensation payments from the government. The precise number affected by these tests and receiving these payments is not known.